Chapter 1 Night Journey Sudden spurs of light kicked the planks of grumbling clouds that lingered over the French town of Rouen. A silhouette of church spires stood sober and defiant beneath the shuddering light. As ancient warring gods, the elemental sky suddenly thrashed again. A thunderous anger surged, slowly dying among the heavens. At length, the quarrel edged northwards. The heat of the dull evening intensified, fusing with the air of the sudden heavy downpour. A rapid patter of rainwater fell incessantly from the eaves of buildings. With overburdened gutters, the spilling rain formed glistening pools and empty dark streets. From their high spires, the snarl of gargoyles spurned their burden. Their thick stone eyes looked downwards on the sodden Quai de Paris, where the water fed the river Seine. As the rain eased, human figures emerged. In the premature twilight, they judged the passing storm. Moving into the dying ring came one lumbering figure, Pierre Rossard, whose job entailed the lighting and gas lamps of this rural quarter. He rarely allowed bad weather to delay him, and this night was no exception. Pierre paused to look with admiration on the Gothic house. He felt assured as his obedient gargoyle spat the rain from his ancient church. Crossing himself, he made his accustomed way from the shadow of St. Ouen. His shambling steps took him to one of the oldest areas of the town. This war had changed these Rouen streets. Now men from countries which he barely knew gathered here to find the company of women with loose morals. This war had challenged many of Pierre's beliefs. His beloved town had become home to women selling their sex to foreign soldiers. What had once been seen as shameful now became normal in acceptance of prostitution. Neither him nor his church could do anything to stop this sin of war. Keeping his shoulders hunched, Pierre stared at the paved ground. He knew each cracked and misshapen stone of his path. The flavour of his evening's wine mulled with a piece of tobacco Pierre chewed. His burden of lamps awaited combustion. In the habit of reaching his first lamp, he spat his tobacco and noises to the ground and began a fresh piece. As Pierre began his routine, his shambling disappeared. He weaved between the paths, leaving a trail of glowing lamps. Briefly, he looked back on his creation. Rain pools of molten gold softened the street. Pierre continued. He touched each gas lamp in tender affection, and with a pop brought light to his streets. Pleased that the rain had kept his town quiet, Pierre hummed to himself, thinking of his warm home and his waiting half bottle of wine. His thoughts were interrupted by the blur of movement to the corner of his eye. A shadowy figure was close beside him. With a fizzle, a spent cigarette curved past and hit the damp ground. Surprise turned to anger at the distinct shape of a man leaning in the niche of a doorway. Hands in pockets, his face remained half hidden by the shadow of his officer's cap. He was a foreign officer, a British man. The old man opened his mouth, wanted to say something, but hesitated. Pierre's expression became a sneer as he saw another figure in a second doorway. They were evidently companions of the night. Mustering as much venom as he could, Pierre spat heavily at the ground between them. If there was one thing he held equal to women of loose morals, it was British soldiers. Matching his displeasure, the woman cursed him loudly. Pierre Rossard turned and shuffled on his way. Ta, fire man, don't jump up Port Cornille, the woman continued, making a fist, along with the torrent of abuse in her native French. Having maintained her stance, she turned her attention to reassuring her feminine dignity. Aline Dany adjusted her shawl of silk braid and lace that had long passed its best. The rest of her clothing was in the same condition. Although faded, the quality of the dress suggested previous ownership of wealth and standing. The basis of her dress was cream chiffon, in a mode some years out of date. Homemade alterations were evident in the uneven hem. The flowing cloth had been cropped in an attempt to create a tapering effect just above the ankles. At some point, clustered velvet ribbons had been added around the waist, and the exaggerated v-neck Aline adjusted her shawl, emphasising her ample bosom. Aline edged forward slightly. Balancing on the tip of the door's threshold, she focused on her neighbour, the English officer. Her scorn at the old man dissolved into a false smile. The two of them had been standing there for a long time, or so it seemed. Yet only a few minutes had passed since Aline had engaged this man in conversation. Her intention was one of business. But so far he had made no response. 
Aline's mind searched for the next step to attract her business. With a well-practiced style, she moved her shoulders back against the wall. The lace shawl slipped slowly about her breast. Aline glanced up to where the little daylight remained, slipping behind the Ruan skyline. There was a momentary pulse of light. Thank you.